Welcome to Access Church. We're stoked you're with us. Before we get into the teaching today, grab your Bible, your note sheet, and maybe your favorite beverage, and be ready to receive all that God has for you today. Lord, I find you in the seeking. Lord, I find you in the doubt. And to know you is to love you and to know so little else I need you. introduce a new song to you today, uh, maybe to some of you, uh, but this is a song inspired by Psalm 23. So let's sing this together. It's called King of Glory. I know a place where I can find you. Here in the valley Fast to what I know. 
What's up, y'all? That's how we say hi in Arkansas, where I'm from. Sure. Thanks. Everybody have a good New Year's? Okay, like two people? Cool. We just, we just got through some tough ones. So hopefully you had a good New Year. Uh, all right, quick little story, and then we'll get started. So last year was a hard year for me at work for a lot of reasons. Uh, my job, I've had the same job for like almost 12 years and nothing about my job changed. It's been the same. People are pretty much the same. The stuff I do is the same. I just had a really hard time and I spent a few months with a really bad attitude because I was just kind of over my job and I had a lot of long hours and difficult people to deal with. But it was the same thing I'd been doing for a long time. And something was different than all the years prior when I was okay with my job. And that was that I forgot why I wanted to work where I work. And there's a handful of reasons for it. I, I mean, main reason I want to work there is because they pay me a lot of money. So that's a good reason to have a job. But also, it's the best way for me to provide for my family right now. There's a, a lot of relationships that I've built there. And there's like 50 other reasons why I want to work where I work. The point is that I got dissatisfied, I stopped liking my job, I almost quit. I was a few conversations away from going to jail because I was so angry with some things, and it's because I forgot why I wanted to work there. So same thing over the last couple years during COVID and the ups and downs and stuff, there's been a few times when I have just been kind of tired with walking with God. There's been a few times where I didn't want to come to church or I didn't spend time praying and reading my Bible and pursuing a relationship with God and the main reason is because I forgot why I follow God. I wasn't thinking of why I want to be in a relationship with him, why I want to be a Christian, why I want to be a part of Access Church. So today, we're going to be hopefully going through some really simple things in Proverbs, just as a really simple way. It's nothing super profound. It's just really simple ways and reasons for why we choose to follow God. If you have a Bible... If you want to, you can turn to Proverbs chapter 3. If not, uh, there's going to be some up on the screen up here, the verses. So 
do whatever you want with that. We're going to be in verse 1. We're going to take these a couple verses at a time and go through the first few verses. It, like I said, we're just going to kind of take these verses a couple at a time and just try to gleam what it's saying about why we should, why we should follow God. Okay, uh, verse 1. My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commandments in your heart, for they will prolong your life for many years and bring you peace and prosperity. So part of following God is keeping his commandments. And if any of you guys have read the Bible for more than five minutes, you will know that God has a ton of rules and commandments and things that he likes and things that he doesn't like, and he expects us to do those things. But why? Uh, in verse 2, it says, they will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. So this is pretty dope. I love it. I mean, I get, so, okay, so many years, prosperity, that's all cool. My favorite part of this is the peace part because I have three little kids. So if any of you guys breathe out of your face and you have kids, you will know what it's like to need peace. So this is really, really practical. All these verses are going to be practical. The writer is saying, hey, remember God's teachings and keep his commandments because it's going to be good for you. It's going to be good for your life. It's going to be good for your peace. It's going to be good for your prosperity. So when we think about God's commandments, one of the reasons that we follow him, one of the reasons that we keep his commandments and remember them is because they're good for us. We follow God because he's good for us and because he's for us. If you think about the Ten Commandments, um, they don't always make life easier, but not following them definitely makes life harder. And uh, if you read through any of them, you can clearly see that God gives them to us for our benefit. It's way less of God giving us some rules to keep so we can prove that we're good. The, the things God tells us to do are actually good for us, and I can prove it. Do you want to be robbed? Everybody should say no. No way. We don't want to be robbed. Guess what? There's a commandment about that. Thou shalt not steal. Don't rob other people, and then other people don't rob you is good for you. And, and I realize that's really simple. That's very, uh, that's just easy, I guess. But this whole thing is going to be that way. The reason we follow God is because he's good for us. He, uh, he gives us rules that help us in our relationship with him, in our relationship with other people. So following God by keeping his commandments is a benefit to us. Is that making sense? Super easy, no like deep hidden meaning there, other than it's just good for us. It's good for our lives. Uh, next verses, verse three and four. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck and write them on the table of your heart. Tablet, tablet of your heart, not a table. I missed the T. <laughs> then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. So here, here's a side note. One thing I love about Proverbs is a lot of times you have these two-verse blocks where the writer says he tells you to do something, and then the next verse, he tells you why you should do that. And for me, a simpleton, that's really good because I could just read a couple verses, and it tells me what to do. It tells me why I should do it. So in this one, the first part of the verse we are supposed to let love and faithfulness never leave us, bind them around our necks, write them on the tablets of our hearts. Why do we do that? In verse 3 it says, or in verse 4 it says, to win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. So this is really interesting to me because I feel like there's been times in my life where I've earned some good favor or a good name um, or a good opinion with men, with people that I work with or friends that I have, I've never thought of God having an opinion of me. Like not just, okay, not that God in you know, the universal sense has how we just throw God around and the name God and the word God, but like the God, the same one from Genesis chapter one, the in the beginning created all the stuff the one who all throughout the Bible is saving and healing and doing miracles, like the person, God, has opinions about us. That, like, that makes me super excited. I want him to have a good opinion about me. So how do we, how do we follow God 
in a way that makes him have good opinions about us. In this verse, it's really simple. It is being loving and being faithful. A lot of what we learn in church is geared towards a healthy relationship with God, um, but also the Bible and God are very concerned with our relationship with other people. God cares about us getting along and being decent with other people. Uh, and, and it's all over the Bible. So the, everything in the Bible boils down to pretty much two things. Your relationship with God, your relationship with other people. And God wants both of those to be good. Uh, if you remember the Lord's Prayer, it starts out with our Father. That's the collective our. Not like me by myself, our. So uh, like growing up, I had this idea that me and Jesus had our own special relationship that was different than everybody else's. Somehow I was just like... I was on the special teams of God's football team, and for some reason, it, me and him had our own thing. You, we can't think like that. As Christians, our relationship with God, a part of that is our relationship with other people. One reason we follow God is because it's good for our relationship with him. It's good for our relationship with other people. Also, John 3.16, everybody talks about the verse, and it's awesome when we think about ourselves getting saved, but it says God loved the world, the whole thing, all the stuff in it right? It also says, whosoever believes in him, not just, not just us. So when I read this, it, uh, this particular verse, the reason it stood out to me was it reminded me that none of us get to have our own special thing with Jesus. It, or or it, uh, we, we don't get to have our own type of relationship with God that lets us act like other people are his stepkids. I don't know if you guys have met Christians like that. I've met Christians like that. I've been a Christian like that, or I've met other people with certain... If any of you guys have ever been into drugs, you'll know that if you like one type of drug, people that use a different kind of drug, you look down on them, right? So after being a Christian, I don't mess with drugs anymore, but sometimes I will meet somebody still in a lifestyle, and if they're doing whatever the particular drugs are, in my mind, my, first, my default position is God's stepkid, Okay, yeah, you walk with Jesus, but you're still doing that drug, and that's gross. And so we might be different kind of different kinds of, and that's that's pride on my part, and that's judgment, and that's no good because God is our Father, right? He's your Father the same way that He's my Father. My relationship with Him isn't some special thing off on its own that's different from yours. Because guess what? We're all connected. My relationship with God at some point will be dependent on my relationship with you also. So all that to say, God doesn't have a bunch of stepkids running around. We're all his kids. When, anytime we default to the position of thinking that we're a different kind of God's kid or we have our own thing, we've, we've missed something. So we're all his children. One reason we follow God is because he's really good at helping us maintain good, healthy relationships with the people around us. It's another reason we listen to his commandments. Okay, let's jump to verse 5. But by the way, there's that, I'm, I don't have a bunch of main points. I don't have anything like specific that I'm trying to say other than I'm, I want to get through these few verses, and each one of them, I just want to be a reminder of why God's good, why we follow him. And that, and th so that's it. There's not, not a big, no big major point coming or anything like that. We're just going to work through these, and just hopefully every time we read a verse, you're reminded of, hey, yeah, that's a great thing about God, and I love that I follow him because of that. Okay, next verse. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him or acknowledge him, and he will make your paths straight. So, I've heard this verse a million times also. I've, had, I've gotten a couple, like, greeting cards with it on it, coffee cups with it. I, popular verse, in all your ways, acknowledge him, right? And so, we need to do that. We need to acknowledge God in all of our ways, and just that term, all of our ways, is a sign to us that there are a bunch of different ways, right? There's not one straight way, and we acknowledge God when we're on that, being good moral Christians. It's every way. If you're in a good way, if you're in a bad way, if you're doing things you're supposed to, if you're doing things you're not supposed to, in every way, if you walk with God, if you follow God, you need to acknowledge him. So if you think about Adam and Eve, they sin, they're in a bad way, let's say, and they avoid God. For the first time in, you know, in God's creation, people run away from God and they hide in bushes because they sinned, right? They didn't acknowledge him. They tried to get away from him. And I feel like a lot of us do that when we struggle with sin or we struggle with temptation or we struggle with anger or 
Whatever the thing is that causes us to kind of drift from God, we forget to acknowledge him in that stuff. And that doesn't mean that you acknowledge him and then you're a good moral Christian again. Sometimes that means you acknowledge him for years while you're still in the bad spot or in the bad way or struggling with the thing. You keep acknowledging God. So read the Bible over and over. The whole first five books of the Bible are about God establishing a relationship with the Hebrews, his people group. And guess what? Every other day they mess up. God says, here's a good thing. Just do this and it'll keep being good for you. And then the next, they, everybody's all for it. Yeah, let's do it. And then the next day they say, no, nah, I like it better the old way. I like it how it was before we had a relationship with God. I like the things I used to do. I like the stuff that used to make me feel good. And so the Hebrews had a back and forth with God for hundreds and hundreds of years. But do you know how God responded? Every time they acknowledged him, he said, okay, here's our next thing. Here's your next good thing. Also, here's your next responsibility. And every time he took him back, it wasn't, okay, here's your spanking. Here's your punishment. I'm going to be angry. I'm going to, it wasn't like that. Anytime the Hebrews wanted to acknowledge God and come back, he said, cool, I've been waiting right here. This is what I want. So in our good ways, in our bad ways, if you're walking with Jesus, if you're not, if you're backslidden, if you haven't prayed in 10 years, guess what? Acknowledge God. Stop what you're doing. Talk to him. Think about him. Read the Bible. Talk to other people about him. Acknowledging God isn't this big spiritual thing. It's having him on your mind. Talking to him the same way you do to other people, right? The verse also says that we, uh, we have many paths. It says he's going to make our paths straight. Right, same way with acknowledging him in all of our ways, we have different paths. Some of us are on good paths, some of us are on bad paths. Some of us might be on bad paths right now. And, and a lot of times you're just on a, like a standstill. You feel like you're not even on a path at all. You're not really following God, but you're not like chasing after a sinful lifestyle. You're just kind of stagnant. Guess what? Acknowledge God on all those paths, whatever path you're on, whatever way you're on, stop and acknowledge God. Acknowledging God starts with getting to know Jesus. Well, I have a lot of friends that are kind of, I don't know, well, I don't have a lot of friends. I have a lot of acquaintances. I have like two or three friends. One of, one of them's my wife, so. Um, but I, I know a lot of people who have this odd sense of spirituality, right? And they think, you know, just, just try to be good. That's all you gotta do. So I, I disagree. My spirituality is one that says, at the very least, meet Jesus. And the rest of the stuff, right now, it doesn't matter. So if you're a drug addict, guess what? Your first step isn't getting clean. Your first step is meeting Jesus. Stop and try to meet him. If you need help, talk to any of us. We will help you meet Jesus. If you're, if you're an alcoholic, guess what? Your first step is not to stop drinking. It's to meet Jesus. Right? If, you, if you're gay, or if you don't like people because they're gay and think they need to stop being gay, the issue is not them being gay. The issue is that they need to meet Jesus. And guess what? If Jesus is as big and powerful as we think, guess what? He can work on their hearts on his own. It's not always our job to do that. Right? So the first step is not behavior correction. The first step is not getting on a better path or getting on a better way or doing better or being better or being more moral. The first step is you meet Jesus, regardless of what it is, don't care what it is. Any situation in life, if you don't know Jesus, the first thing you do is you meet Jesus. Over time, Jesus works on this stuff with us. Over time, he makes our path straight, right? Another reason we follow God is that whether we're on a good path or a bad path, whether we're in a good way or a bad way, we can acknowledge God and he will straighten those paths and straighten those ways out. But it starts with meeting Jesus and acknowledging God. The beautiful reason to follow God is that all you have to do is acknowledge him and he will start working with you on straightening those paths. Uh, let's go to verse seven. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. So another super practical thing the writer is saying, hey, calm down, wise guy. Don't trust your own wisdom, your own pride. Have respect for God. Try to resist evil, shun evil, stay away from what you know to be bad. And guess what? 
The next verse tells us if you do this, this will be healthy for your body and bring nourishment to your bones. So I get the health part. I don't know what nourishment to your bones means, but I want it. It sounds awesome. Are you guys seeing a theme here? Every one of these, it looks like each of these verses were told to do something, to follow God in this certain way, and that tied with that is a benefit package. There's something that's good for you if you do the thing. So this is, that's true. There's a lot of perks. There's a lot of things that come with following God that, that are good. But it's important that you're not deceived into thinking that if you follow God, all this stuff happens all the time. Because most of us know that whether you're following God or not following God, life can be hard or messy or bad or difficult or sad or angry or abusive. Life can be a lot of really bad things, even if you walk with God. So here's the point of all this. Whether you get the health in your body or the nourishment in your bones or all the other good stuff that we just read about, God is the benefit package. God himself, as the person, is the point. He's the benefit to following all. We follow God because of God, because of who he is, because he's good, not because he gives us good stuff. The beauty of that is most of the time we follow God because he's good and all that good stuff is in his pockets and we get some of it and that's good for our lives, but we don't follow him for that stuff. If you follow him for that stuff, then Christianity is just a pyramid scheme. If you follow God to go to heaven and get out of hell, you're not following God for God. He's not, your, he's not the benefit. He's not the point of your salvation. It's not going to hell. I, I don't like the, but growing up, I heard a lot, of, a lot of preaching about like, hey, you have to have Jesus or you go to hell. So which one do you want? Try to be more moral, say this prayer, follow Jesus, or burn in hell forever. Yeah, well, I'm going to take Jesus, right? And even if I don't believe in Jesus, I'm going to say that because I don't want to go to hell, right? I don't want to be on fire. I don't want to burn. Guess what, guys? That's not necessarily the gospel. The gospel is that Jesus is the best. He's number one. God is the best. He's good. He wants the best for us, and that's why we follow him, because of who he is, not because of what he can give us. And what's rad about that is most of the time, because of who he is, we get that good stuff too. But we can't expect that just because we do the right things and follow God that we get all the good stuff. God is the good stuff. Do you get it? Sometimes other good stuff falls out of his pockets, but he is the good stuff. He's the point. He's why we do it. We follow God because he's good. He's good to us. He's good for us. And he's the best. It's not because of what he has to offer. It's because of who he is. Okay, let's go to verse 11. My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline. Do not resent his rebuke. Because the Lord disciplines those he loves. As a father of the son, or as a father, the son he delights in. So verse 11 is telling us to accept God's discipline and reproof. Reproof is criticism. Um, I always thought that it was, I don't know, you're wagging your finger, yelling at somebody, you know? Not that. I looked it up a long time ago. It's just criticism. It's just saying, hey, here's some behavior. Here's, here's some critical advice to fix the behavior. When God reproves us, he's criticizing something that we're doing. So we're supposed to accept this. And we're supposed to accept it because God only reproofs those that he loves. So it's kind of like this situation with my kids. I won't tell you which one because no, most of you guys know my kids, and this is a really embarrassing thing. One of my kids, for a long time, would almost never go to the bathroom. The days, if not weeks, would go by, and they would not go number two. And me and my wife would try to make them. We would tell them, go and stay in the bathroom all day if that's what it takes, but you have to deal with some things or you're going to get sick. And they wouldn't. They didn't like it. They're, and there was a million reasons. They did not want to, and they refused. Uh, to the point that they would get sick. They'd be in pain and anguish, wriggling around on the ground. And the solution was easy. And so me as a dad, I would criticize their behavior. And I'd say, here's what you're doing wrong. Go to the bathroom. You have some baggage. Walk in there and leave it there and come back out. And guess what? 
life is going to be better for me and for you guys. Y'all, some of us hold on to some stuff, okay? Some of us have baggage. Some of us don't want to let some things go or drop some things off. And for whatever, the, it doesn't matter what the reason is. What do you think God's correction is? What do you think his reproof is to us that are walking around with baggage, with things we won't let go of? I bet he's telling you to go drop some stuff off and come back and trust him, just like with my kids. So I realize this is a weird analogy, probably uncomfortable for a lot of people, but it's the truth. That's how God reproves us. His criticism is, hey, your behavior is going to hurt you. Go drop some stuff off and come back. And we can, we can work on this together. His, his punishment, is, okay, I was taught growing up, look, if you get a flat tire on the way to the work, it's, it's one of two things. Either you're living for Jesus so well that the devil's out to get you so he popped your tire. Or, you, I don't know, you looked at a girl's butt and God's mad so he popped your tire. A, God's punishment, his reproof, his criticism, his correction isn't bad luck. It's, it's not pain and anguish or, anguish or little things that, you know, bother you throughout the day or things that go wrong or bad situations. Most of the time, his discipline, his correction, his reproof is criticism, which you feel in your spirit, in your conscience, right? We call it conviction. Some people say the Lord is working on them. All of these things just mean that God is reproving you. That's the criticism. That's the reproof. When you feel it in your spirit. But then there's behavior that needs to be fixed. And usually what God does is he reproves you. You get the criticism and then he steps back. He says, the bathroom's over there. Go drop off your stuff and come back. And so that is the picture of God's wrath most of the time throughout the Bible. Oh, you want that more than me. Okay. You, I don't have to do anything. I don't have to punish you. I don't have to hurt you. I'm going to step back. And if you want that more than me, you can go get it, and it's going to destroy you. So the way God corrects us and reproves us is he says, here's your criticism. You know this is bad for you. You know this will hurt you. I'm going to step back, and if you want it more than me, you're free to do that. But I want you to, I want you to leave that alone and come with me instead. So, God's punishment, his reproof, his criticism isn't bad luck. It's not bad stuff happening to us. It's not the misfortune of the day. It's when we're forgetting to acknowledge him and we slowly drift away and we're, we're pursuing and seeking things other than him. And eventually his correction or his punishment towards us is stepping back. Not harming us, not hurting us, not punishing us. God's, God's wrath doesn't work like that right now. So all of that to say, if you guys feel like God has been hammering you, if he's on you because life is hard, parts of life suck, work sucks, or this sucks, or whatever, hey, guess what? That's not God's punishment. Like maybe you're a dummy and you made some mistakes. Guess what? Acknowledge God. Seek God. Pursue God. Follow God. He is the point, whether all the stuff works out or not. But that's not his punishment. God doesn't punish us that way. God's good to us. Remember, he wants the best for us. He wants good things for us. There's a handful of verses about God being a good father and giving us good gifts. Right? A good father doesn't punish their kid in bad ways. So, God does not punish us like that either. God loves us. God corrects us. He reproves us. He convicts us. And then he helps us by telling us what to do, how to change our behavior. And it's incumbent upon us to respond. So sometimes God reproves us by stepping back and waiting for us to drop off our stuff and come back to him. We follow God and we have faith in him because he's, he's the best. He's for us. And all of these verses show us that hey, he gives us rules and commandments and things for us to remember because it's good for us. He wants the best for us. There's a verse in 2 Samuel that when I am feeling like 
maybe I haven't been pursuing God as aggressively as I typically do. And by that I mean I don't read my Bible and I don't pray and I forget to acknowledge God. I forget why I follow him. And I'll do that for weeks. I'll just forget that I even have a relationship with him for days. And then I'll remember, hey, I feel horrible. Things are not going well. I feel unwell in my spirit. Why? Oh, yeah. I forgot to acknowledge God. I forgot why I follow him. So when I'm feeling like that, this verse in 2 Samuel reminds me of the reasons that I follow him and what he wants for me. So I'm going to read that as the worship team comes up, and then we're going to pray, and then we're going to go home. And throughout the week, remember why you follow God. And it may not be any of these reasons that we talked about. It might be something completely different. But at the very bottom of all of it, God's good and he's the point. And he wants good stuff for each of us. And if we just continue to acknowledge him and follow him in the good ways and in the bad ways, regardless, it'll be good for us. God will respond to us. So, in 2 Samuel, it's verse uh, 31 through 37. As for God, his way is perfect. The Lord's work is flawless. He shields all who take refuge in him. For who is God besides the Lord? And who is the rock except our God? It is God who arms me with strength and keeps my way secure. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He causes me to stand on the heights. He trains my hand for battle. My arms can bend the bow of bronze. You make your saving help my shield. Your help has made me great. You provide a broad path for my feet so that my ankles do not give way. Jesus, you're the best. God, you've been so good to all of us in ways that we don't even know about, and maybe we never will. But God, for all of us, I pray that as we're starting a new year, God, that this year would be a year that we constantly remember why we follow you. God, and then when we're in a good way or a bad way, that we stop and we acknowledge you. God, that we're never afraid of your reproof or your correction, and that we never try to avoid you or run away, but even when we have reason to want to run away or avoid you, God, I pray that we would be reminded to stop and acknowledge you and talk to you and ask you for help because that's what you're inviting us to do. God, help us to remember that you're a good father that gives us good things. Help us to remember that you're the point of why we follow you and all this stuff, not even your things. God, you're the best. We love you. I pray that people here, if they, if they don't know you, God, that you would call them, you would introduce yourself to them. God, I pray that our friends that aren't here, our family members, I pray that you'd use us to introduce them to you also. Use us to help other people acknowledge you, to remind other people why we follow you and why they, they follow you. God, for people who don't even know you, I pray that we would remember that behavior and sin and, and whatever their lifestyle situation is, that that's not the point. The point is that they need to know you and to meet you, God. And I pray that we would be people that you use to do that. So God, this week, please help us to make you happy. Tell us what you like. Tell us what you don't like. Help us to follow you and acknowledge you in everything that we do. In Jesus' name, amen. Still sorry, you never left. 
had slain for us. You alone are worthy. And the praise is yours. And the praise is yours. You're the one we bow before. Reigning over us as we lift you up. You will reign forevermore. You will reign The one who was and is to come. God of every moment Forever crowned Exalted now You alone are holy Yes you are And the praise is yours And the praise is yours You're the one song this morning 
invite you to stand as we, uh, I think it sums up a lot of what Ephraim covered today. We run to the Father.
run to the Father again and again. I run to the Father. I fall into grace. I'm done with my hiding. No reason to wait. My heart found a surgeon. My soul found a friend. So I run to the Father. it y'all have a great week make good decisions not bad ones remember to acknowledge god in everything good ways bad ways all the time remember why you follow him see you later thanks for joining us for more resources to get involved or to invest in the ministries at access church visit go to take care